In today's episode, we're going to talk about spring, we're going to talk about electromagnetic induction, and a little bit on our hydrofoil. So let's get things started. Now, so here have two, we have two identical springs. So what is the energy stored in the spring when it is compressed? So usually, a lot of people punya mistake is they'll just write this thing called potential energy. But it is illegal to write so because since this is all about spring, you have to state that this has to be elastic potential energy. So if it's potential energy, there'll be two. One is elastic potential energy, one is gravitational potential energy. So you make sure you state what potential energy it is. Now, so what is the compression here? So if this thing goes from 12 cm to 8 cm, so the compression of the spring is actually 4 cm. Calculate the spring constant. So based on F equals to kx, rule number one, always check that what you are given is in Newton. Common mistake, maybe they give you in terms of grams, so what you will usually need to do here, you have to change to kg, then later you have to multiply by 9.81 to change all the way to newton. So make sure you know that gram to newton, how to convert. But since this question is already given in 3.6 newton, so it makes my life quite easy. So my extension right now is 4 cm. However, remember your SI unit, guys. All right. So therefore, then I will be able to calculate my spring constant. So what will be the unit of my spring constant? So this will be 90. So since this is going to be F equals to kx, so usually k is equals to force divided by extension. So this is actually Newton per meter. So that's why this will be nm negative 1. Calculate the length in 4.1c. Now series, when your spring is added in series and added in parallel, series and parallel, they behave differently. So what you have to know here is that if now I have both springs in parallel, they will share away the load of 5 Newton each. All right. Later, I'll draw a series one for you. Ah. So 5 Newton is each. So now I want to find each one side of this spring will take how many cm. Okay. So let's just do the calculation here. Now, I realize that when I increase 3.6 uh, cm, the change in length is equivalent to 4 cm. All right. Now, if now this is a change in 5 newton, so how many cm will this be? All right. So you just have to make sure that you what one of the choice that you can do here is you can do a simple ratio. All right. Now, so based on my calculation, I've calculated that my 5 newton is 5 newton. The change in length here will be 5.5555556 cm. So therefore, that is the reduction in the in the length of the spring. So don't forget that you always have to use your original length minus away the change in length. So what we can do here, it is it is fully legal to put this calculation at the bottom here. And then after that, what you're going to do here is you have to take 12 cm, you're going to minus this 5.556 cm to get your final answer in terms of cm. All right. Okay, <clears throat> so let's not waste time on the calculation part. So we go into a compression balance. Now what's the relationship between the compression of the spring and the load in balance? So of course the higher or you can say the larger the load so what you will do is that you will say that the larger the compression okay because the heavier load you put the more the spring will be compressed okay however guys remember this rule okay if your spring is in parallel okay let's say now we, we do differently okay you hang something if let's say this is 6 kg, they will always share 3 kg and 3 kg if your springs are in parallel. Now, if let's say now your spring is in parallel and then I add one more series whereby this is now going to be 6 kg. So can you tell me how are they going to be divided? Okay. So first of all, parallel and series. So here got two floors. So each floor will take 6 kg. But because the top floor got two parallel, so this, this one each will take 3 kg. So this is how the load will be distributed across the whole entire spring. So make sure you are aware of this thing. Ah. Okay. 
So what will happen to the spring when a heavier load is placed until it exceeds the scale of the spring balance? Now, so in this question, they want to test you on a physics term. Okay, so we can say that the elastic limit of the spring will be exceeded. All right, the elastic limit of the spring will be exceeded. Okay, so if they ask you, let's say they change this into two marks. Uh, how do you know if the elastic limit is exceeded or not? So remember, you have to comment that it will not return to its original length. Okay, guys, it will not. Uh, it will not go back because if you go more than the limit of the spring, once you take away the load, the spring will go back to the original length. Okay, so you can say when load is removed all right so this is also another one of the type of question that they like to ask whereby they comment about the elastic limit of the spring okay then after that here you have to state two modifications that can be done to the compression balance so that it measures a lot with bigger mass now when you want a bigger mass so what you want is you want a stiffer spring correct so what you want here is technically a stiffer spring what you want here is a higher k is actually what higher spring constant Okay, there are total four factors that will affect your spring punya stiffness, okay? So let's just talk about it, all right? Now, the first one, obviously, is going to be the length of spring, okay? So if you want stronger, okay, yes, the answer is you would want a shorter spring. The shorter the spring, the stiffer the spring, the higher the spring constant. Number two, now when we talk about diameter, this one can be quite confusing, because we got diameter of spring sometimes they say diameter of spring then a uh, spring coil coil of spring and then there'll be another one more is called the diameter of the wire now wire will be how thick the wire is used to be made into your um uh, your, your spring okay for example if i compare this to this will be the thickness of the wire so obviously for diameter of wire we want this one to be the larger diameter one the better so this one we want this to be a larger diameter of the wire but if we talk about the spring coil kalau spring coil we are going to compare a wider one and a smaller one however in this situation the smaller one the smaller diameter of the spring coil actually is better so you see this diameter you want small this diameter you want big so it could be quite confusing at times number four obviously it will depend on the material of the spring so if we talk about material it will depend on usually they'll say something like a alloy which is something like a steel or similar substance so remember no iron no aluminium uh, no upper those pure metal uh, sometimes i even see before they ask you some other like for example zinc or something or copper or no copper okay remember uh? so you want something that is alloy based on all right okay so here many many choices we can say one of the things that we can say we will use we say use uh larger diameter of wire for the spring okay or you can even say use steel spring which is stronger okay so this one you just have to state two um modifications okay can i say guys can i say i want to add more springs can i say i want to add more springs because if i add more springs then obviously uh they will share the load but then if they share the load means that i can support heavier load right so is this answer acceptable three seconds three two one cannot why because you have to tell me how you add unless you say add more springs in parallel okay because don't forget you know if you are in series you actually don't help it actually makes it even worse but if you add more springs in parallel, it actually makes it better because you will share the load. So remember, if you say add something, always tell me how you're going to add it. 
all right how are you going to edit okay so for spring easy right guys okay now bonus question okay so this is one of the very typical question they like to ask you so based on the graph how to find the stiffness of the spring how to find the elastic potential energy okay so you are trying to look for two things k and the ep which is called elastic potential energy lah, usually how they write this now everybody knows that this is actually f equals to kx so for spring constant very simple remember to check your axis first okay so if i want to find k this is going to be f over x so this is actually my y axis divided my x axis right so you can say that this is actually your gradient so if they want to ask me how to find the stiffness of the spring that will be equals to the gradient of the graph the gradient of the graph number two if you want me to find what is the elastic potential energy ah yeah this one also very easy now everybody knows that the formula is actually half kx squared but people don't know that this actually comes from half fx you have this one baru you have that one you know guys fx was created first so fx was created first baru you have half kx squared so remember you need to know which one first are chicken or egg first are okay so why is it half fx okay because this is equivalent to what we call the area under graph so if you see here if let's say objective question girl whatever question girl if they shape this and they ask you what will i get if i calculate the area of this side you will get in terms of joule all right so what is this that is your elastic potential energy you get this thing called the elastic potential energy so why is it half fx because if you look at this obviously a triangle so that will be the reason why there is a half so if you look at the height of the graph that is f right because that's the vertical line so that is your force then if you look at your base this is the whole entire thing so that is your extension so it's a half fx known as your elastic potential energy your gradient will be equal to your stiffness of the spring also known as spring constant all right okay uh you can feel free to look at this question so this question is actually very simple really very simple you have to tell me that now you have to create a swing that can be used by an adult of larger mass. So if you see this kind of question, sometimes people don't know how to do because they say, teacher, they never give me the chiri chiri here. Okay, most of the time, if they don't give you the chiri chiri here, they will usually label, uh, label the picture. All right, they label the picture. So if they label the picture, those are the chiri chiri things that you can say about, okay, you can talk about. All right, okay, uh, can I? Uh? So uh, you can say a, a stronger, a stiffer pole, a stronger pole, a larger nest, why? Because you want to fit an adult. What about the base? You want a larger base to increase stability spring? You can say you want to add parallel, you want to use shorter spring, you want to use steel spring, you want to reduce the diameter of coil, Ah, semua pun boleh. All right, can okay. So it's actually very easy. Um, yeah, larger base increase the what base area so that this thing will not topple because the guy will be larger mass. All right. So spring very easy. Um, if you ask me, I won't be worried about spring. However, highly recommended to go and read your definition like Hooke's law and elasticity. All right, can. So on to our next question. In our question 2, we will talk about electromagnetic induction. So the first thing is, what is meant by electromagnetic induction? Okay, if we follow textbook punya definition, it could be quite long, alright? So guys, follow my Instagram. I already posted all the textbook accepted definition, which I write out word by word, every single word according to textbook. So please go follow my Instagram as well. And then you will see that for electromagnetic induction, I just write the most important thing. So mainly, it is pro the, the, the production of what? So there's this thing called the induced EMF. So what about your induced EMF? So induced EMF is actually your voltage, right? Correct? And then after that, why? Because there is something called, there is a changing 
of magnetic flux or magnetic field pun boleh. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of changing of magnetic flux? Now, if you look at textbook, the definition here that they actually talk about that there is a relative motion, okay, relative motion between who? Between the conductor and the magnetic flux or the magnetic field. Okay, so what do you mean by this? Okay, for example, uh, let me just say this again. Now, if I have a north-south magnet, so obviously in between here, I have my upper, I have my magnetic flux, which is the magnetic field lines. So a relative motion means that I take this thing, I go across it, I cut through. So the changing of magnetic flux is actually also called the cutting of magnetic flux. So changing of magnetic flux and cutting of magnetic flux is the same thing. Okay, guys, cat is the same thing. So um, now when you pop down across this, there will be a relative motion, meaning to say that, okay, guys, remember, changing or cutting means that there will always be a movement. So no movement, no cutting, so you won't get anything. Okay, what do you mean by this? So when you put a wire across, when you move across a magnetic field, you will actually produce electricity inside, okay? Electricity is a very, very general term. So we will say that you will produce this thing called the induced EMF. So induced EMF actually means your voltage, all right? So you will get voltage in the wire. You will produce electricity in the wire. So where do we use this? Now, the few things that I can think of, all right, is number one, if you learn this subtopic, you need to try to go and read your transformers, which is the easy one. The second one, high class a bit, once you know transformer, you can go and read up on this thing called a wireless charger. And then after that, there's another high class one, which is what we call an induction cooker. All right. Now, so uh, yeah, make sure you go read this up. All right. Okay. So now we see. So they want you to state the polarity of X and Y. Okay. Remember this, guys. Okay, when you want to find polarity for a solenoid, it is always based on this thing called Lenz law. Lenz law, all you have to think is something like opposite. Okay, what is the opposite? All right. Now, you see here, when this bar magnet is being pushed towards this solenoid, what is the opposite action? Means that when your magnet want to come, your solenoid don't want to to don't want you to cut kacau him, okay? So it's uh I use this example like friends and that okay. When when your uh sometimes when you go ajak your friend, right? Correct, you go ajak your friend, girl, but your friend, right, very pattern one, they don't want to go out. They say, yeah, I cannot lie, my mommy don't let la I I got I got what class la whatever. So always it's always the balik one. Alright, it's always opposite of you you ajak them, ah they they tak boleh Okay, but then but then when one day you don't want to ajak them, then you know what your friend will say? Wala, why you bojo? Why you never ajak? It will always be the valid one. Okay, like you don't know what they're thinking. Right? All right. So in this case, in this question, the magnet is pushed closer to the solenoid. So your friend want to reject you. So what they do, they will purposely become what polarity? So they will purposely become the North Pole. All right, Utara, North Pole. So that what they do here, ah, they tolak you. All right, it's always opposite. Ah. Always over there. So if X is going to be North Pole, your Y is going to be South Pole. So if your X is going to be North Pole, then your Y is going to be South Pole. All right. Determine the direction that flows through the galvanometer and state the deflection of the galvanometer. Okay, how to do this now, guys? This camera is going to be a bit tricky, but what you can do right now is okay, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Okay, this camera maybe mirror flip already, right hand and put your thumb towards the left hand side. Remember, if north is on the left hand side, your thumb needs to be here. Your thumb needs to point towards the north pole, all right? Okay, so now what happens here is, okay, when your thumb points towards the north pole, okay, can you, if, if you curl like that, you cannot see your fingernails, right? Correct, guys? What do you need to do? You need to open up your finger to see your fingernails, right? Correct? You have to see your fingernails, right? So you will see that when your thumb is this way, most of your fingernails, I'm going to use purple color, your fingernails is actually go up. So that is your nails. All right. Okay. Now we do another experiment. Huh? If today my North Pole and my South Pole like that, so my thumb will need to 
point towards that direction, correct? So that is the direction of my thumb. So where will my nails point now? Okay, so if my thumb now go this way, if I book up my hand, I cannot see my nails, right? Correct? So I need to curl down. Eh, I see my nails going down. So you will see that your nails actually point downwards, all right? So that is where the direction of my nails. So thumb left, nails up. Thumb right, nails down, all right? Okay, so now this is North Pole. So thumb towards the left, thumb towards the left, nail goes all the way up. So if your nail goes up, so that is your direction here. So you will see that your direction of the current flows from A to B. So you will say that your, your Gabano direction is, it flows from A all the way through to B through the Gabanometer, A to B through your galvanometer but the fancy thing here is that when your current flow from a to b the deflection of the galvanometer will point from b to a it will deflect the other way around punya so you will say that the deflection of the galvanometer is to the left hand side so it's a, another direction surprisingly it is another direction all right it's to the left okay so explain your answer. So what you're going to do here is you just have to state because that is the Lenz law, your current flow will always oppose the motion causing it. So what you're going to do here is you're going to put in the definition for Lenz law. All right. Now, a lot of people say, teacher, definition memorized uh, can only use for definition punya question. Uh. No, actually why uh, I quite encourage students to memorize definitions because sometimes in your experience, plain punya part, right? If you don't know what to write, sometimes if you write the definition, you modify a bit of application words inside, like in this solenoid, uh, then your definition might lend you, might, might give you the extra one mark, all right? So don't just think that definition is only used for definition question. It can be used in your explain part also. Okay, very, very, very good one, all right? Okay. So here, you're going to talk about how induced current can be produced in a solenoid. All right. Okay. Now, um, for this one, we will say that as your magnet is moved. Okay. So here, I made one mistake already. Okay. Why? Because we cannot just say magnet. Nowadays, if it's a permanent magnet, we have to say as permanent magnet is moved into the solenoid solenoid basically is the coil okay all right so you can see that the there is a change in magnetic flux at the solenoid so mainly mainly actually what you're trying to say here is because okay your magnet will have all these like very fancy fancy punya magnetic flux magnetic field lines ah okay can all right so when you tall up this thing ke dalam your, your magnet punya outer magnetic flux will cut through the wire here. It will cut through the sides, all right? Imagine if this is a ring, all right? And then after that, I have, let's say, my, my bar magnet moving across. So my magnet punya outside magnetic field will accidentally cut through the tepi, all right? So I will produce this thing called uh, change in magnetic flux. The got minor, the got the solenoid la, at the solenoid. La. Now, number two. So as my permanent magnet is moving to the solenoid, there's a change in magnetic flux. Number two, we will say that this change in magnetic flux or the cutting of magnetic flux uh, will cause electromagnetic induction to occur. Okay. Now, very seldom you will see uh, those uh, teachers to recommend students to write the phenomena. Okay, because this is a phenomena, so always write what is happening, the phenomena. La. So in this case, it's your electromagnetic induction to occur. So then you can say induced EMF will be produced at, will be produced at the solenoid. Okay, then you can say since the circuit is complete okay because if this is just a wire you will produce voltage but because it is not a complete loop you won't have electric current flow no current flow but but 
if this circuit is complete, then you will say your induced current will flow across the solenoid. All right, can okay. So so that there you go. So really explain to how this thing actually cause an induced current to be flowed. So I state that there's a change in magnetic flux. This will cause my electromagnetic induction. So this electromagnetic induction will produce this thing called induced EMF. So once the circuit is complete, then my induced current will flow. So that's how I split my four marks. Okay, can all right. Okay, so here we have an induction cooker. Okay, so what is an induction cooker? So you have to investigate the characteristics of an induction cooker as shown in table two. So table two, here you will see that for an induction cooker, um, how it works is that at the bottom part here, they will produce this thing called the magnetic flux. All right, can, okay. But then uh, you have to use alternating current. Why? Because direct current, Punya masala is most of the time your current is static. Remember, okay, guys, rule up that you have to remember current produce magnetic flux. Uh, same current will produce same magnetic flux. So, meaning to say, there is no movement. All right, so if there is no movement, will there be electromagnetic induction? Okay, we double check. Balik, ah. So, tadi here we say. That in order to have electromagnetic induction, you must have a relative motion. If you don't have a relative motion, when there is no movement, there will be no change, no, no, no cutting of magnetic flux. So much They will purposely use this alternating current. Now, why do they want to use alternating current? It's because they want to produce this current increase, decrease, increase, decrease, increase, decrease, increase, decrease. Increase, decrease. So Ah, now my current actually, uh, we don't say movement, but we will say that the current is actually changing. Why? Because alternating current, I've got positive, got negative, got positive. Negative. So now my magnetic flux is also changing. So changing means that you have movement, right? So when you have movement, baru you will cut. So how this thing works is that if this is your uh, induction cooker, you will produce magnetic flux, all right? You will cut through the, the cooking pot. Alright, now but when you cut through the cooking pot, so biasanya we will say that your voltage will, will be produced, right? Correct? And at the same time, because of the properties of the, the metal pot, they will actually cause your voltage to be converted to something what we call something like eddy current, which you should learn this in your transformer, known as eddy current, E-D-D-Y current, E-D-D-Y current which will then produce a heating effect. So it will produce, your eddy current will produce a heating effect. So then the pot will heat up. Ah. So that's why one of the main reasons is that it has to be an iron pot, all right? Now, electromagnetic coil. Okay, don't confuse this one, guys. You have to use copper. So many people uh, actually, teacher, why not use nichrome? Because nichrome got high resistance then the heat produce more, so you will technically cook faster, right? Okay, guys, that one is a different thing. That one is if the wire is touching the, the food, then the food will heat up faster, okay? Here, we are using electromagnetic coil. Okay, let me ask you a question. How to make more electromagnet? You see, tadi we keep saying, your current will produce your magnetic flux. Your current will produce your magnetic flux. So in this question, you have to ask yourself, you want more current or you want less current? Because this is induction cooker, ma, so it's not really on the resistance already. This one is used induction, use magnet on. So obviously, if I want to have more magnet, I want to have more current, only it do, I need to have low resistance, all right? So physics, right, you have to be able to relate here, relate there, relate here, relate there. And up here now, finally, we have to use the ceramic uh, surface, all right? Now, um, so my answer is going to be L. Now, if you, if you are interested to see the final explanation answer, you can always just look here, all right? How they explain why alternating current because there will be a changing cutting of magnetic field. Because alternate, ah, all right? So ceramic, why do you want the surface to be ceramic? So that it is a high specific heat capacity, uh, it will be a heat insulator, it will not 
heat up very fast. All right, why you want uh, uh, an iron pot is because you want to form any current. Ah, just now we say, right, okay. But apparently, they takisa you, right, induce current. So, induce current, boon, bole la, or even EMF. Then, why you want copper? Because it has lower resistivity, okay. Now, if you give me lower resistance, I will mark you wrong, huh? I want lower resistance so that it will produce more current to get a stronger magnetic field, all right? So, something related to this. Now, what is very similar to this thing? is my wireless charger lah. Tapi wireless charger is not, guys, is not any current. Any current is hitting. You don't want your wireless uh, charger to, to heat up, all right? So uh, make sure that you are more careful. Wireless charger is very shared concept. It shares a concept with transformer. Okay, can, all right. Okay, so this is on our electromagnetic induction, not too complicated. It's just always about electromagnetic induction, Lenz law, and I give you another pointer, you can go and read up on Faraday's law as well. All right. Okay, Ken, okay. Now we are going to go into our third question on hydrofoil. Now, so here, so here, this is a hydrofoil question, all right, whereby it has something to do with a, a surfboard, okay? Now, um, some of you might not know that this is actually called a hydrofoil, but this is something that they, they stick it at towards the bottom of it, all right? Now, so let's just look at this comparison first. Let's look at this comparison first. So, five seconds, this one can go further, okay? The power of the motor remains the same, but this one goes further, okay? Why? You will see that because this one is now higher up, lah, okay? Now, why higher up got advantage? The reason why this is higher, the better, is because if the surface is not touching the water, then technically I have lesser or lower, what? Water re resistance gun okay so at lower lesser water resistance only it too you will see that this will be raised up all right so you will raise up so why because you will produce an upward force which we usually call that as a lift all right now if you want to ask me did you me upper okay if you want to like quickly learn this thing you ask yourself do you know what is an aerofoil if your answer is yes all right then it is actually the same thing so how a hydrofoil, aerofoil, okay, they, are, they work in a similar fashion to you. How they work is, as your air moves towards the top part or move across the top part, you will realize that the top part usually have higher velocity. Why? Because it travels a longer distance. So if it has a higher velocity, so this part you have low pressure. Lah. Tetapi, tetapi, but you will see here, this part is a shorter, shorter distance, means that you have lower velocity. Imagine, uh, if you stay very far from school, you have to, you probably have to drive faster to school, right? Correct. But if you stay very near to school, if the distance is very short, then you can walk to school. So slow, slow, pun tak apa. School is just beside your house. So low velocity, then this thing will be high pressure. So the high pressure will actually push towards the low pressure region. That's why, Remember, uh, one of the, the, the keyword that people always forget is you have to say that the, the difference in pressure creates a lift, all right? So why? Because it is your pressure difference that created the lift that will push this thing upwards. So this is very important, uh, okay? If you are interested to look at the final answer, yeah, how does a hydrometer work? Is like this. So you talk about the top velocity, high, so low pressure, then there's a pressure difference, then there's a lift force produced. And then why you can even say because the lift is larger than the result, uh, weight upwards, all right? Now, however, I don't really like this answer because I prefer you all to do a comparison. Meaning to say that, don't just say that the speed above increases, you will say that it is higher than the bottom region than the uh, bottom region of the aerofoil. So you always have to compare the upper region, compare versus the bottom region, so that you always have to do a comparison. So top high velocity, then bottom. Top lower pressure, then bottom. So the difference pressure will create a lift force. So that's how you should write this thing on the hydrofoil, okay? Remember guys, 
The larger the hydro foil, okay? If I ask you, guys, guess which one produces more lift force? Obviously, the larger the hydro foil, the higher the lift force, the more the lift force, okay, Ken? All right? So, uh, which one will fly higher? Obviously, this one. Uh. That's why, naturally, you see uh, aeroplane with bigger wings, larger surface area, can usually lift heavier load, can fetch more passenger and everything, okay? So, make sure you are aware of that. So, that is a bit on the hydro foil. Okay, now, one bonus question since you stayed all the way until the end. Now, just a gut feeling. Nowadays, they like to ask this thing called a green building, okay? Now, usually in heat, if you talk about what are the more common exam questions, green building is number one. If you ask me number two, okay, I, I write this green building, ah. Okay, number two, if you ask me, it will be like car radiator related question. Why? Because building and cars, are things that your physics teacher like to tanya. The third thing, even hot topic, confirm guys, it will be air conditioning. Uh, why air con? Uh, because nowadays very hot, right? Or it will be related to refrigerators. Refrigerators. Now, um, I will drop a link at the bottom whereby uh, this is going to be related. I mean, I, pro I made a video on car radiators and refrigerators, even talking about even talking about such thing called the land breeze and the sea breeze. So feel free to check the video out. Probably I'll link it in the description below. So we have the car radiators, aircon and refrigerators. Okay, can all right. Now, so um if you see here, they like to ask this kind of question. Okay, we look at the answers. So usually Remember, we for our wall, we will always go for high specific heat capacity. Remember, that's why traditional punya houses are made up of wood, alright? And then after that, uh, your roof also, roof also high specific capacity. Why? Because this is a heat insulator. And then why do you want to have more windows? So that you will increase convection for better airflow. So, in fact, the windows are usually built on the higher side. In fact, you will see that there is something called air hole, okay? Now, very old houses, right? Their house on top got, got those windows that they cannot do top one. The window is fixed one. Or even they have lubang, 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 so that the hot air will actually move out. Why? Because hot air will always rise. So, if they ask you anything related to here, to the top part, top part, sini, you can say you can add some lubang, so that the hot air will actually flow out, all right? Okay, windows larger, better, more air to flow. And then one more special thing you can even say, that it could be a layered window. So nowadays, if you see, windows are dual layered, and in between the two windows, the, the two pieces of window, they will add a layer of maybe air, or even more high-tech one, they'll put vacuum, okay? Why? Because, if now inside got air vacuum, you will there will be lesser heat conduction. So technically, it will act as a uh, better insulator. All right. So um, you reduce heat loss or heat absorbed from the surrounding through conduction. So of course, in the afternoon very hot, then your heat won't won't enter the house. Why? Right? Because lesser conduction of heat, ma. But of course, at night your house will be hotter, outside will be colder, so it will also reduce the heat loss to the surroundings, all right? So there are a few things I just want you to see because if this question comes out as a compulsory question, it can be quite surprising, uh, guys, it can be quite surprising. So, um, yeah, so for this episode, I will sampai sini sahaja. Uh, we'll see if I can do another one more episode. So thank you, everyone.